St. Clair comes up big that one. Second save for St. Clair. The extra touch, what? able to clip that up for Pope Jones on the doorstep. How did St. Clair keep that one? Out? We are live. What's up, guys? It is Lauren Sesselman here and my handy dandy trusty side co-host. We have Darius Marcellin, um, and we are here with the Pro Mentality Podcast. And today we have a very special guest because he's Canadian. And Trinidadian. And Trinidadian, so look at that. That's, that's an amazing combo we have today. We have Dane St. Clair of Minnesota FC United. What's going on? Thank you guys for having me. Thank you. A fellow Canadian baby. Let's Trinidadian. Go. Fellow Trinidadian. Let's in the okay, house. Yes, well, let's go. A little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. It's like, it's the combo right here going exactly. on. Exactly. So. <laughs> what would you say are the biggest things as a goalkeeper because we get this question a lot actually we were working with a group of girls and they were at, the goalies were asking what can they do to be better out on the field with their back line it starts what? with building relationships as well no know, know, knowing your teammates knowing certain players like to do certain things or their strengths are this and mm-hmm. maybe their weaknesses are this so how can we cover up their weaknesses and play to their strengths so I think things like that and just being personable off the field as well because I think when you have a better relationship that person respects you more and they're willing more to listen to you. And of course, people are gonna fight on the field. That's normal when people are competing. But I think when you have a better relationship off the field, you're able to to go back on that and see the bigger picture later on. What was it like to be a national champion? And then like, what did it take to be at that level? I think, I mean, it's easy to focus on on the positives and ending it, ending it with a national championship, but there were definitely some some tough times in my my first couple of years, uh, not really playing, you know, things like that, thinking about transferring because I wasn't playing. So um, there was definitely some some tough earlier times, but to finish off my senior year and play my last game, winning a national championship, I think there's no better feeling. Um, I mean, playing with guys I still call my best friends to this day, being on the field with them, like it's just a, a lifetime bond. I felt like that, like it was able to like eclipse in the perfect moment. And, um... So being Canadian, you're from Ontario, what was the process like? Because we have a lot of Canadians that are listening on this, and a lot of them have reached out to me to ask the kind of process of being Canadian and playing in the U.S. What was that process like for you? So I played for uh, Vaughn um, growing up. I played for Ajax a little bit before and played for Vaughn. So we used to go do uh, show, showcase tournaments, a lot of showcase tournaments in the States, or we'd have our own showcase where some coaches would come, guys would email coaches and stuff, say, hey, I'm playing – in this tournament at this time, I know like you're going to be at this tournament. Like if you have time, come, come, come to our games. I know some guys on our mm-hmm. team are doing that. Um, reaching out to coaches and stuff like that. And luckily I played for, for a good club that had a lot of connections and a lot of good history of, of uh, producing players to the college level. So there was a lot of context from my coach as well that um, was able to help. But I think at the end of the day, it's about performing as well when you get in those moments, because, mm-hmm. um, that coach might might be walking by for 15 minutes and stop by and that 15 minutes can can change a lot of things and you mm-hmm. never know kind of what when that 15 minutes might be it might be just a warm up to be honest and just stuff like that to kind of just get the ball rolling so i think it's always you got to always practice and play like there there's eyes on you i feel like advice you would give your freshman self that your senior would tell it tell your younger dane um, I think be patient. I think there was times I was, I was definitely frustrated and I think kind of allowed my standards to drop because due to that frustration and because you never know, especially as a goal, you never know when your time is going to come. And when that time comes, you have to take it or else you'll be right back to a position that you don't want to be in. So I think just being patient and allowing yourself to train better. I think it helped me a lot because I, before Maryland, I don't think I was the best practice player. But after going there, I think I became a lot better trainer and really kind of working on my craft. What was that process like of going from college into pros? So I had, uh, technically I had another year of eligibility because I redshirted my sophomore year, um, which is kind of very rare in a lot of cases, but I was away away with national team, our starting goalie from the year before, came back as well and he was a senior. So it kind of just made sense um, to make that decision. So I had another year of eligibility actually. But I decided that um, I, wanted to, I wanted to take the next step and go into the draft. And I was fortunate enough to um, be one of the underclassmen that uh, signed a Generation Diaz contract. So um, 
Can you explain what that? Can you explain what that is? I don't know what that is. uh, Not a lot of people understand. And it Mm -hmm. used to be called Project Forty, which was under Nike. It now is Generation Adidas. Can you? And it's a lot of the greats Mm -hmm. have have come through that program. So can you just explain that, please? So mm-hmm. it's basically it's basically geared towards um, underclassmen because you kind of see like NBA and stuff like that or guys will leave after the freshman year, but it's very rare in college soccer. So they kind of look at kind of the best five to eight or whatever in yeah. that year that they decide and they reach out to these guys and offer them pro contracts to kind of leave, leave school early basically and enter the, enter the draft. And although I was a senior academically, because I redshirted the one year, I still had another year of eligibility if I mm-hmm. wanted to. So that's how I was able to uh, stay eligible to, to get that um, contract. You've been working for this your whole life. It's something you've probably dreamed about since you were so young, like so many others. And your name, because I remember when I was going through it and my name got called, I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Like this is happening, you know, of all the highs and lows throughout your career. And then your name gets called. What was that feeling like? um definitely like you said just so joyful so proudful I think kind of growing up you always said you wanted to want to be a pro and just it it's seeing it come into fruition Mm -hmm. is um definitely a lot of emotions and kind of just a blackout moment almost like it just you're just overfilled with so much joy and like couldn't really tell you what I said or what I did without (laughs) going back and and looking at the video but just having my, my my parents there I think was uh special as well because they put a lot of time and effort in into supporting me and to try and see that I, I I was able to make it I think um mm-hmm. was definitely important and then but then as soon as that all that kind of joy rush goes on is thinking of the thought process okay this is only step one I'm kind of back to the back to the bottom of the totem pole again it's about mm-hmm. how can I work my way up and and show that I, I belong in the league and I want to be here you know what I'm saying I think as a goalie, um, kind of, I look back at my time at Maryland and I was able to learn and, and like I said, become a better, better practice player. My, my uh, rookie year, we brought in Vito Manone. So when I watched playing for Arsenal, Sunderland in the Premier League growing up, so it's like, it was kind of crazy to see it, but like just such a nice guy. And um, kind of just learning from him and seeing what, what tidbits and stuff I could add to my game. And we also had Bob, uh, Bobby Shuttleworth as well, who was a veteran goalie. So kind of just learning from those two. And although I wasn't really playing in games when I, when I was um, back in Minnesota and not out on loan, just kind of learning from those guys. And then Mm -hmm. when I went out on loan, okay, can I apply some of these things that I, that I've picked up from these guys to my own game now and kind of make my game more well-rounded. Yeah. And then my second year, I kind of knew this was the, the, the year that I was trying to play, play in some more games. So the plan was for me to go out on loan the whole season kind of get that game experience now that I thought the first year I did well with training and learning. And then the second year was about applying it. And then COVID hit as soon as I went out on loan. So I didn't play. Um, then finally we were able to play, played five games, um, thought I was doing well. And then uh, our starting goalie here at Minnesota at the time um, got, had to get a double hip surgery. So I got called back. And then I think that, that, those five games I was on loan, I was very grateful because it was able to build some confidence and stuff like that going into Minnesota. And I was felt fresh and confident and things like that going into those games. How important is confidence for a goalkeeper like directly? Because everybody confidence uh, just playing in the league is, is important. But like as a goalie, you're like your own man on an island. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think I think confidence is really important, especially if you ask a defender, I think – when they have a confident goalie behind them, they'll say that mm-hmm. they feel more confident as well. So I think it's kind of something that can can rub off on on the rest of the team. And of course, you're you're going in with the mindset the ball's not not crossing the line today. So I think that can kind of <laughs> rub off on the on the rest of the team as well, which I think is important. Your first senior call up, seriously. First of all, it is the coolest experience. But I want to know in your own words, what what has that been like? Especially working with Coach Herdman. I had him as a coach. Now you have him. Just, I want to get your kind of feedback about that. Yeah, I think um, it's definitely an honor, first and foremost, to, to represent your country. Of course, I've done it a few times at the youth level, but I think kind of when you're at that youth level, you're always thinking, okay, I want to be one of those mm-hmm. guys that make it to the senior team. So I think kind of finally doing it and seeing some guys that I've grown up playing with from such a young age um, there with me as well has, has been special. And I think even 
growing up, you look at guys, I remember watching Atiba, Atiba play and now to be on the same team as him, you know what I mean? In the, in the same, same room and stuff, I think is kind of very impressive and very, I'm very grateful for it. And just hopefully that it continues as well. What is your, your thing, your special sauce, your Dane's preparation before games? How do you get in the mindset to get right? Um, I think it's just kind of staying calm. I think as a goalie, it's important to to be relaxed and not, like I said, not get too high and kind of keep a level head. I think it is very important. So, so, Soka and dance all before games for sure. That is, is that common? I don't think that's so common, but. <laughs> Definitely not no, common at all, but someone could, that kind of just works for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love you have it. to get introduced to Soka music, Laura, pretty soon. So it's pretty soon. I, I mean, seriously, every every player we've had on there has introduced me to like something new. So in the music scene, because I'm like not with it. So I, I, I appreciate I, you. <laughs> What are three things Dean does so that the younger goalies can probably try some of one of these techniques? One, I would say stay calm. No one's really expecting you to save it, so the pressure is on the shooter, so stay calm. Two, if you can, try to get in the shooter's head somehow. I don't know. Stomp the penalty spot. Knock the crossbar. Tell your teammates to get on the rebound. So they just create some doubt in, in their mind. And then three, just go with your gut. Because I think sometimes you can be a little bit indecisive or you read something and you think that, but you're like, oh, I've watched the video on this guy go the mm -hmm. other way every time. But whatever you see, just go with. And if you're going to go one way, go full heartedly because there's no worse feeling than diving the right way or getting a hand on it and it still ends up in the back of the net. And everybody make sure that they're following Minnesota and Canada because he's about to do some big things. So everyone, thank you so much for joining us for the pro mentality. Thank you, Dane. Thank you to my amazing co-host, Darius. And we will see you guys next time. All right.